Hello, and welcome to another episode of Walking by Faith. I'm your host, Larry Montgomery, Minister Larry Montgomery Sr., and this is my uh, special guest, Brother George Blair. Uh, George, say something to people. Make them feel good. I greet you all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There we are. So we are going to chat today about uh, the goodness of God. And the question of, from Luke 18 and 18, what is impossible for men is not impossible for God. Let me read it specifically so I don't mess it up. That happens. Luke 18, 27. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And that's the King James Version. The Amplified Bible Version is what he said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. And there's a lot of meat in that particular statement there. Uh, a lot of times we go through life and Every day, every minute, we are making decisions about this and about that. And sometimes those decisions are good, and a lot of times those decisions are not so good. And what do you do? You, you, you deal with what's in front of you and you keep on going. But we have a good God, a God that we serve, because he is worthy. He is a good God. And I want to stop and, and, and give you that verse in the context of the Bible. And I'm going to be reading from Luke 18, 18 to 30, because I want you to get the background of the statement. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? a good point. He's asking for something very specific. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one. That is God. So Jesus is telling you, listen, you are good. you got, you got to be with God. You know, uh, we'll talk about me later, but right now you want to, be, you want to talk to good, you got to talk to God. Verse 20, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And this is amongst the ten that we know of. Verse 20, and he said, all these, and this is the ruler, all these have I kept from my youth up. Verse 22, now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Now, I want you to think about that. Treasure in heaven. heaven. He goes on to say, And come, follow me. With Jesus tells him, Sell what you got. You're not going to lose it. You have treasure in heaven. And follow me. Because you want to inherit eternal life. Verse 23. And when, this is the ruler, and when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Verse 24. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, Jesus said, How hardly shall that that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. 
Now, there were others present when this conversation started. And verse 26 goes on to say, And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? Verse 27. And Jesus said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So while on the one hand he said that this ruler, this rich man, for rich people to get into heaven is like a camel going through the needle, through the eye of a needle. But it is possible with God. And so the conversation goes on and I'll conclude it here. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Talking about Jesus. Verse 29. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive many fold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting it is so simple yet so complex <laughs> my god so joy Now, when we start off here, we people with a rich young ruler, he realizes that something is missing mm -hmm. in his life. Evidently, he, he had everything, but he was a boy deal that he could identify when he made the right move, he went to right. Now, are you going to follow the instruction now? Are you in Ecclesiastes 12 30? The Bible said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We're not going to talk about this anymore. This is it. Fear God and obey his command. But that is the whole reason. So the problem we we are facing now, now as it said in um, Matthew 6, 33, here Jesus again speaking and he said that, that we should seek him first, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. But we go anti clockwise. We go after the things that God said shall be added unto us. If we seek him first, mm -hmm. these things will be added. Mm -hmm. So that is what really heal our focus. That's why the Lord said to him, Sell all that you have. Mm -hmm. And you will be all right. But that's a tough still now. That's a tough still because when you know that you have these things, mm -hmm. and then somebody going to tell you to get rid of it. Well, you know, let me add this point. I think that possibly the reason for the rich ruler, as we just put in the story here, came to Jesus and asked him, how do I obtain eternal life? His definition of life and Jesus' definition of life, because we don't know what happens after this life. We hear about heaven, mm -hmm. we, and, and we don't know. You know we have expectations and and it's said in the Bible that, you know, my father has any mansion. Mm -hmm. So, my interpretation of the mansion 
and yours may be two totally different things. And we know that God doesn't think like us. So there's a third piece that it could be like. But the point I wanted to make to add to what you're saying there is that your motive, you have to understand. I, I'm walking into a room. I first of all assume there's a room I'm walking into. That could be a fatal mistake. Because you can open the door, you might walk off the cliff. You just assumed that it was a room. And when you're assuming that it is such, all of those things that are familiar to you is what you expect when you walk in. When we deal, when we want to have a relationship with God, we have to understand, which is very difficult. He's the one who created us. He already knows what's ahead of us. He knows why it's ahead of us, because he has a plan for us. He already knows what we're going to do. Yet we have free will. And so there are so many examples in, in the Bible. Uh, the one that sticks out uh, to me, and we'll have that conversation maybe the other day, is about Judas. When Jesus took him as one of his disciples, they knew what Judas was going to do. But it was written because it was already God's plan. And so we as individuals have to understand these things before we start to talk about well, before we start to try to get an understanding of what we're asking for when we go to God and have a relationship with Him. Because He's a good God, He's like, Holding, he, he's ready to hold the, the feather in his hand. We are the feather. That's how delicate we are to the Creator. And He's willing to hold us in His hand and not let us go through anything. But can we actually comprehend that thought? Very difficult. Very difficult. And we'll go on. Because there's some more meat to that statement there. I want to give you an opportunity to finish your thought. Again, and I will become so important. We are just pictures of meat and material. And it's coming back from our coherence. So when the Lord spoke to Adam, Adam in the beginning, if we did not break that promise, Right here and there. We wouldn't be going through what we're going through now. Sure. Okay, here he was in paradise. Mm -hmm. Everything was a okay. Mm -hmm. Until, and Jesus now is saying unto us now, first thing first, you must believe who I am. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe it, it would make no sense if you even try to come to me. Right. One of his name is truth. He is the way, he's the life, and he's the truth. Mm -hmm. So he, he wants everything the best for us. Mm -hmm. That has not changed. Right. That has not changed. But because of our disobedience, we have in Revelation, it said for every man, every man will be. So back to the word, if we had known the word from the beginning, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. But if we had that locked in, he would be all right. It would be like, oh, it's an autopilot, so you know, we know that we are safe. You lock it in and you just go sleep. Because you know everything is going to be all right. Free will has been 
a problem. <laughs> um, say one. Well, you see, that's why he gave us the free. He gave us a free will. Mm. Now, for us now to really, he's checking out our video. There you go. There so you, go. you have the free will, mm. or are you going to be obedient to what you say? Right. Are you going to believe what you say? All right, you want to do your own thing? Mm -hmm. Look at um, look at Jonah. Mm -hmm. And we always come out at the end. We always get a whooping, and it's still <laughs> going on. It's still going on. It's an ongoing thing. Well, we have to understand that God is not asking us to do something because we legitimately have an option. We have an option because we have will, free will. But the reality is there are consequences with each option that's available. Doing it his way, allowing him to lead, guide, and direct mm -hmm. will come to the result, the outcome that is best. Okay? We'll accomplish what he would have us to accomplish. We will receive the reward that he has for us, which is and greater one more than we can ever imagine that it would be. Yes. So free will case that. Oh, God said go left. Well, let me go right for about two feet, and I'll go left mm -hmm. and then right again. You know, it's like, well, no, because the two feet that you took in the other direction, yeah, there's a there's a consequence to that. Yeah. There's something over there that God didn't want you to step on to step into it because this was the path that I said, go left. I didn't say wait to go left. I said go left. <laughs> but free will makes sense. And if we look back at Adam, when God said, don't eat of that tree. Simple, simple thought. But I'm a big task. I, I ain't got to do nothing, but don't do that. And then as it says, you know, Eve came back with, hey, you know, listen, this is, this is a good stuff here. <laughs> he just told me not to eat that, but uh, okay. You know, that's like a whole new He said, you will be rewarded. Every one of us will be Give it a different name. 
Amen. But when you go from A to B, it's still something that has been done before and will keep being done. Okay? But you have the option of doing it God's way or doing it your way. And we need to really understand when we talk about doing things God's way. You know, the Bible is here. We can read that and understand from other people's experiences. But we need to kind of step back and say, well, what does all this mean? It's doing it God's way. It's not a bad thing. What, what, what God wants in a relationship, and this is what we, 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 we come back into, a relationship means we relate. You know, I understand you, you understand me. But in developing that relationship, it takes me time for you to understand me mm-hmm. and you time to understand me to, you know, me to understand you. And we're not willing to take the time to give it to God. Because God is saying, look, I'm not just saying this. This is who I am. This is what I do. I walk with you. You know, I will lead you. You know, and you know, while you do what I want you to do, I'm following you. Okay? So you can't go wrong. It's always gonna be
So why? Because they want to see what they want to see. They've already predicted in their mind what's going to happen. You're going to fail. Mm. You know, you're going to continue to say. And most of the time, you do fail. Because that's how God proves to you that without him, you're going to fail. <laughs> it's, with, this, with this scenario here with, with the rich man, I'm sure that in his mind, but if I can get eternal, if I can get the understanding to get eternal life, I'm coming with all of what I got now. It's, it's great now because I got everything I want and more. And so when I get there in eternal life, when I'm going to be living forever, I'm living large and eternal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not how it works. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> and, and, and he tells that's you in the Bible, then will be the last that will be first. And here Peter saying in um, verse 28, then Peter said, no, we have left all and followed you. Mm -hmm. We will. But then Jesus told him, you, you're not leaving anything. You're not losing anything. You're going to get more now. And when this is over at new life, mm. you're going to get more. And man is very difficult to understand that. I mean, really, you know, it's like I'm looking at you and, you know, without cutting you, I'm just assuming you bleed blood like I bleed. You know, so you can feel pain like I feel pain. So then there is a point in a situation where you will do something other than what you said you would do. But that's not Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was God as man at that time. So it came down, you know, I, I'm God. You know, I'm just going to Jesus was all about right? the three head, that long term the Trinity. The, the Trinity. Right. You got God and you got the Holy Ghost and you got Jesus. And they are one. And every time he spoke to his disciples and anybody else, he explained that to them. But people couldn't up it. Grasp it. They couldn't understand what he was saying. Disciples that were walking with him. That's they cool. didn't even understand it. And, and that's amazing. Who he was. You were with somebody three years. I'm not talking about three minutes, I'm not talking about two hours. Three years. That's night and day. Mm. And you ain't figured out how he talks, what he means, and what you figured out or not. Did you ask? Lord. Jesus, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Could you explain that again and again and again so I can get it? You know, when you said there was a young man there who was like, hmm. Show us who the father. You can say that when you can show us who the father and his will. Who showed you the father? Mm -hmm. He was a Philip being with you so long, mm. and you still don't get it. Still don't get it. And here we are. Mm -hmm. After we're reading all that, <laughs> we have this, and we are doing the same thing as the people. Is Jesus not? But then again, you know that. Look at it. Bible tell us, I think it's in Matthew 11, right? That Jesus, when Jesus' mother was pregnant, he went to the house, John's mother house, mm -hmm. and, said, oh. mm -hmm. and when she went here, the salutation that he got from the 
Elizabeth. The child in her womb leaped, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and John received the Holy Ghost. So even after that condition, John in the womb, Jesus in the womb, but John knows. Even as a babe, you can't see it. Mm. But John knows. And here, John now is the forerunner for Jesus. Mm. John has seen it. John was right there at the Jordan. John fell off. Mm. John sent his disciples to Is the one who shall be in the world. Mm -hmm. Just go tell John what you're seeing. Just go tell John what you're seeing. <laughs> so here it is. Here it is. You see the evidence. You see the blind eyes being you know, opened. Mm -hmm. The deaf ear has been unclogged. Mm -hmm. The gospel has been preached to the poor. So this is exactly what is going on now. Which will just take your just take your eyes off. Something else is gonna just just creep right in. Mm -hmm. That's why Solomon said in Proverbs 2, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with mm -hmm. all thine heart. Mm -hmm. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Right, right. That means there is no space. I don't want to hear nothing else. I don't want to see nothing else. This is it. No heart to be with that one. I'm so glad. That one. It is amazing when you stop and think. And stopping and thinking is one thing. You got to have your Bible with you. You know, you got to get it. Look, because each time you read it, there's an opportunity for more revelation to get a better understanding of what. Uh, because again, and I ask the question of most people that I, I, I engage: Why are you here? What to work every day? Pick up a check. People who work for you so you can make money. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you came here with. And when you leave here, you can't take anything with you. So why are you here? So people just walk away. What is that? I have an important job. I have children, and what's going to have children? Okay. Now, what's your responsibility to them? Oh well, I got to raise them. Be good citizen. Yeah. And you're spending 20 hours a day working to make money. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to work, you know, and, and, and to make money to have a good life. I'm not saying that. But you have to make time for them to fully understand why they're here. Because the same question came to you. Why are you here? Well, I'm here to work for my family. And then what? Did you help them to understand why they're here and what their role is in the next generation that comes behind them? And then, what reward are we talking about? Because you came here with nothing and you're leaving here with nothing. So where's your reward? That's a whole different thing.
was done from in Genesis. Mm-hmm. We would be here now, what we see here now, the world is perfect. That's it. Mm-hmm. What are the children of Israel? When they were in the wilderness.
to accomplish something to leave money behind that I worked so hard for to somebody who could not possibly mm -hmm. appreciate it because they ain't worked for it. <laughs> You'd expect me to say, wow, they say, I have a thing back in there, but you turn in your grave. Mm -hmm. Because you work so hard mm -hmm. to accumulate all of it. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus is even saying here, well, I'm trying to give it to the poor. Give it to the poor. But if you tell somebody, like, whoa. He's saying that the earth is mine and everything here belongs to me. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it, like I know I told you the story in my neighborhood here. He could be here now and whatever the need is. Whatever the need is. Mm -hmm. God knows. Mm -hmm. He knows. Before you ask. Before we ask. And he even said, you don't even know what to ask for. <laughs> you don't even know what to ask for because you feel thirsty and you want someone. So you say, man, I need someone. And somebody just ring the door, ring the doorbell and you know, mm -hmm. piece of water. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know that I need this. Mm -hmm. My father. Mm -hmm. and we don't need us, we don't need a cell phone. The heart of men is in the hands of God. Mm. Whatever our needs are, Jesus, He will supply. Mm. We've been faithful to Him, He will be faithful to us. Mm. Because remember, as you've been, you've been speaking so strongly, and you come here with nothing, you achieve all of this, and then when you leave it, you leave it to your kids, and your kids are all. It don't matter because I ain't had to put a dime into it. No. And I ain't got to sweat over I a nickel. Sweat. It. <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing can ease it on easy. Right. That's exactly right. You know, and having a relationship with, with God, we really don't have a whole concept of God. Be, uh, yeah, and, and the reason being, is we have determined the definition of each word that we use. Now, God has to use some of these words in order to help us understand what he's talking about. So he controls your heart. He knows in your heart what's really there. You, know, you have a need, you don't understand something, hey, ask for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And wisdom is Oh, being God. able to understand what God would have you to understand. Because there is the relationship. All of this here is nice, but it's all going to pass away. It has a time limit on it. But the relationship with him, as he said, is eternal. We don't know what the next chapter is. We don't know what to expect after it. Let's just say the, uh, the rapture. We don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect the day after death. He knows what's happening. And one thing I do know so far, ain't none of the dead came back. Mm. You know, not as they were. You know, we may say, well, uh, if I talk about ghosts, you know, whatever. But that ain't how they were when they were here. You know, they see through. Mm. <laughs> Well, we are 45 minutes into this, and I know we need to have a conversation about salvation and help people to really understand what salvation means. You know, we, you know, I, I have all kinds of uh, definitions of it, but when you truly sit down and, and try to understand it, understand what God is saying to you about salvation. You, right up at the top of the list, the easiest way to listen, when I ask you the question, why are you here? There's an answer. 
because with salvation, you get to continue to live on and to see life at its best. We get here, we, we get to see the good and the bad and the ugly, some of it, because we still ain't looking caught in the same foolishness that somebody else got caught in because we thought we saw it, we didn't see it. But salvation itself is something that we need to have a conversation about, that we can really understand. I mean, you don't even go to church and hear preach. It's another thing to sit back and to read the word and understand what he said. While you're looking at the situation, I, I can be in a book and see the word, but if I don't look at my own situation, and the situation that have been happening around me, to get a real understanding of what the word is telling me, I can miss it. There you go. But what he's talking about is beyond what we're thinking about. We got our definition of life. Yes. He's talking about eternal life. You know, so what a whole new concept. Yeah. And again, why are you here? Look at this picture. Neither is your salvation of your experience. I need you to speak that up loud. Because I'll make sure that that gets out there. And we're going to close with that. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must.